Well, getting a producing credit is all about leverage. You want my script, these three people are attached to produce, that's the way it is. Well, you know, do, does a studio want the script that badly? Or do they want the package that badly? Then that's what it's going to be. But, you know, a producer in the old days used to be a guy who did all those things and he was a producer with a big P. He wasn't an exec producer, he wasn't a co-producer, wasn't the associate producer. Now you have all these different people, you know, like assistants to certain people are becoming associate producers. Well, okay, but your job as an assistant, surely that's what you would do. You've got to become a diplomat, but which side do you pick? Do you pick the side of the filmmaker, the star, and the studio? And the other question becomes, you know, who makes the best film? Because film, you know, actors care about their role and obviously they want to make a good film, but that sometimes is in balance with the filmmaker's vision because the film supposedly stands as a complete entity as a film. An actor is a key part of that. But if you have, um, if you have a producer, let's say, who is the actor's partner, Clearly the agenda of what that producer is going to fight for could, could be different than the filmmaker or the studio. They've also got to be logistically very smart. You know, they've got to understand money, financing, uh, logistics. You know, kind of like being in the army, like you've got to make sure your troops arrive and all the food is there, otherwise you're in big trouble. Uh, and I think the other thing they need too is they need a lot of patience. By definition, artists, whether they be actors or directors or even writers for that matter, you know, have perhaps artistic tendencies, which perhaps, you know, sometimes would not, would be uh, a little bit hard to corral. But what they've got to do is have a, an appreciation for what that talent is and somehow have an understanding of how to give them the space they need and then kind of try and bring them back a little bit if they feel like they're, you know, overdoing it. So I think it's generally speaking, I'd say vision, a patience, and hopefully within that, a level of taste that people will believe that you'll deliver a good film and you'll be responsible about bringing it in for a reasonable amount of money. If you look at kind of, I think if you look at the perhaps more the working class audience, they are going to the movie because they want to escape reality, they want to dream. So therefore they want to go to event movies or, or fun movies. They don't really want to go to a wonderful filmmaker's film necessarily of the old school where it's more about an intimate relationship. That's something that they would enjoy if they saw it, but that's not the kind of thing they're going to get out of the house and pay 10 bucks and go down, rush down to the local theater. So the studio is a combination of a bank, which is give me the money to develop the script, give me the money to make the film. Then there is the distribution and marketing aspect, which is that they've got professional people who know how to put posters in bus shelters, to put TV ads on, where do I buy, when do I buy, um, all that kind of stuff, which is really, really important. And then they have the muscle to get into the right theatres. So when you have that kind of muscle, that means the independent movies don't necessarily get a look in. So your independent movie is a movie that only exists if you have great word of mouth. And if you're lucky, you've got maybe a star in it, which gives you a bit of attention, so people will come discover it. But it's very hard to compete against a studio. In the old days, a movie star earned its stripes. After 10 years of being a movie star, you were a real movie star. Today, the market is so quick to jump on a trend, to jump on something. You see an actor, you go, he's a star. You make a couple of movies with him, those movies don't perform. You blame it on what? You blame it on the movie star? He's not a movie star, you blame it on the film? Again, that's where representation comes in. Is, is it a good film or not a good film? Is it good for the career, not good for the career? But there are actors out there who have gone from being total movie stars to becoming almost out of the business because suddenly the perception of who they are is not backed up because the audience is not gonna go see the 10 film. 10 years ago, there were a, a couple of franchises, a couple of sequels, you know? But today, every studio is like, we've gotta have a franchise, we've gotta have a franchise. Because a franchise not only is good for business because it allows you to keep making movies that people already like, but the ancillary business, you know, the t-shirts, the, the balloons with a the stamp, there's so, much, so many things that go on around that. It's just a huge, huge business. Who sells that movie, who distributes that movie, how they market it is, is really important. In fact, on studio movies, I would say the marketing is more important in some cases. This is going to sound really crazy, but the marketing of a movie is almost more important than the making of the movie. Because if you've got a brand or a concept that people go, oh my God, I can sell that, that movie will sell itself. I mean, there are movies that people have gone to and said, well, why did I go see that movie? Or it's on $100 million and you're like, but the movie's not very good. Because the machine, the concept, the trailer, the log line, whatever you want to call it, people hear about it, they go, oh, that sounds cool. They go watch the movie and it may not be as great, but that hook has got them into the movie theater.